Hello there, I am Man in Yellow and welcome to the first part of a short guide series I will be doing for Phobies. These guides will each cover a small section of the game and I chose to do it that way because it, if I just did the entire thing in one big video, it would first of all be very long and hard to get through, it would be a lot of information in just like one sitting, and it would also just be harder to find if you're only looking for one specific thing, like maybe you just want to look at something with mobility or counters or trading or something like that, and then there's no reason for you to watch the full thing. It also makes it easier for me to focus on one specific subject in each video. In this first one, we will be looking at the basics of zones or zoning as some call it. There is basically just the attack zones of each phobia. And it sounds like a very obvious thing, but people still don't understand even the basics of them. So I will explain them first and then in the next video we will probably go to something a bit more advanced with it. So what is zoning? Well, each phobie has two zones, essentially, attack zones. We have the double hit zone, which is where it can hit twice if something goes in. And then we have the single hit zone where it will move once and then hit once in their zone. And it's very important to make this distinction because they deal double, essentially just deal double damage if you go into the double hit zone, right? So it's a lot more scary to go near there. But it is also very important for other things because the zones kind of zone for the phobia, that's why they're called zoning. So, phobies have very different zones depending on which phobia you look at. And we call these for 1-1s one or 2-1s or 2-2s two or 1-2s two or 1-3s. Two there are also other ones like 3-2s and stuff like that. But what this means is it has one movement and one range. Two movement, one range. One movement, two range, two movement, two range, or one movement, three range, right? And you can see how the zones change a lot depending on which type of phobia we are looking at. With a one movement, one range phobia, we are looking at a very small double hit zone and also a very small single hit zone. This means it's a lot less threatening, it covers much less space. For a 2-1, we have a, still a very small double hit zone, but we have a larger single hit zone. So this phobia isn't really like threatening to kill something on its own, but it can be used with something else to make be a threat, right? Then we have the 1-2, which is of course slower, but it has a double hit zone that is a decent bit larger, but its single hit zone is only one tile more than the double hit zone because it can only move one tile, right? We have the two movement, two range phobies, which are of course just more mobile than the other ones. So the double hit zone is the same as the one two, but the like single hit zone is a lot larger. So it's able to go to more places and it just covers a very large area. And then we have the one three, which has a very large double hit zone and only a single hit zone that is one tile more because it only has one movement. And these are very important to look at because if you look at something with a double hit zone that is very small, that means that a ranged phobie saying either a 2-2 or a 1-2 or a 1-3 will be able to stand in any like part of this zone or even further out if it's like if it's a like three range phobie you can stand all the way out here, but for two range phobie it would be in here, right? In this zone. If you attack from there, this phobia will not be able to double hit in retaliation. It will only be able to get one hit in, which means that it has no attacker advantage or defender's advantage, whatever you want to call it. When the opponent moves in here and hits you, you can only hit back once. And then after you've hit back once, they will hit back twice. So they get three hits and you only get one. If instead we look at something with a double hit zone, they will walk up, they will hit you once, you will hit them twice, and then they will be able to hit twice back if they survive. But you hitting twice is a lot more threatening and is more likely to kill the enemies, so it will lower their overall power. And that is why having a larger double hit zone is very very important compared to having a large single hit zone. This is also something that we call the melee problem, or just range advantage, because ranged phobies can stand outside of melee phobies, like zones, and just attack them for free, essentially. And if the melee phobie goes in, it will likely get surrounded and die. And that is the big problem with melee phobies, and why they are usually worse than ranged phobies in a lot of cases. We can also see this if we look at a 3 range phobie. I have a Noculus as the example here. It has the same effect against 2 range phobies as 
two range phobies has against melee phobies. So this three range phobie can sit out of range here and it can hit the unbearable for free without the unbearable being able to do anything. Now, of course, phobies with like larger ranges or better zones have worse stats. That's just how it is because otherwise they would obviously be overpowered. So um, like an unbearable has a fairly large amount of stats because it has a pretty low zone in terms of movement. And it is also just like much worse mobility, which we will get to in another guide. But here you can already see like, if you compare the stats of these two phobies, the Noculus obviously has much, much, much worse health than the unbearable. But that is just like the difference between them. When you have a larger, zone you get worse stats if you have a small zone you get high stats but you feel like a lot more clumsy because it's harder to move around often and it's also just like way less of a threat area if we look at the one movement run range phobies we can see this like to an extreme because then like a unit like Numskull or Cerberus or Hydra have incredible stats for their costs, but their zones are so incredibly small. So a Inoculus could actually sit right here and attack this twice, and it would move twice, and it would still not be able to hit the Inoculus. It could, would just like have gone in range. So you would take four hits to do one hit. And if it's a range phobie, you will obviously like, it will walk up and hit you, and then you would walk up and hit it once and you would take double hits again. So it's a very, very like, it's a very bad thing to have a smaller zone and that is why they get so many stats for having smaller zones. And these zones are so important because when you are capturing points, they matter a lot. And here at the top, we have a very basic example of it. We have a cassowary, which effectively has a two range double hit zone because it can jump. It's essentially like a range unit, except it doesn't get to stay safe when it uses its ability. And then we have a Razor Mouth, which is only a one, like one range zone around it where it can double hit. So if we go over and take this point here with the Cassowary, you can see it is actually zoning for itself. If the K9000 goes over here, you can double jump on it and you can deal a ton of damage. If you did that with Razor Mouth instead, you would have to go over here and only do one hit and then the Razor Mouth would die. This becomes like a much bigger problem when you're looking at a ranged phobie mo moving nearby. So if instead of this K9000 we said that this was Jinsting or a Spot or a Hevo like the one we have down here, if they move down here and hit our phobie, a race mouth would just have to take that hit and run away, whereas a cassowary can retaliate and then run away or can double hit and maybe even kill the opponent. And that is why having ranged phobies or just phobies with larger zones, like with larger double hit zones, which is essentially what a ranged phobie is, is so important for taking panic points. Of course, during the very early stages, it is fine to have like one keys which are never double hit so like they don't have double hit zones for two range ever because that would be overpowered maybe they will make one in the future that is like insanely low stats but currently there are no like one keys with a large double hit zone they can only do it and run range around them during the early stages it is fine to use one keys because there is nothing threatening them but as soon as you get past like the first one or two turns in the game it stops being a like it stops being nearly as good because you will just get hit by enemies for free and your phobies will die without getting any value for you which is obviously terrible so that is why having range phobies is so good down here you can also see some examples where the inoculus can hit the unbearable for free like i talked about before or here where the hevo can hit this twice for free then this has to move in and it takes two more hits just to do one hit even if this has moved in like like one range out of here like if it was sitting back out of screen here somewhere then this would still be able to move up do one hit this would get one hit in and then you would have traded three hits for one which is so bad which is also just that's the entire thing you just really really like range phobies because of this that's of course not saying that melee phobies are unusable there are still some good ones but in general range phobies are much better for you especially during the early stages, but also even later on, just because their, their zones are so much better. So if we go into the game here, we can look at like how some of these things work, just to really explain it in the most simple way possible. If we put a wiggy here, 
we are not really scaring them away from taking this point with anything because we are going to have to move up and hit and then they will double hit it and they will maybe snowball it or something and it will die and we will be very very sad which is obviously not what we want to do so if instead we do this but we bring either a cassowary or this could also be a creep out here we are able to actually threaten this zone it could also be spot or ginseng those are probably better examples and then whichever phobia that goes here would take damage for free which the opponent won't like but we will very much like that cassowary is probably a bad example of that but like because he goes into a zone so he's like he goes forward so he's actually threatened by enemies but if we said there was a gins thing here if the opponent took a one key over here it would just straight up die so currently the gins thing is covering all of this space with a double hit zone and then it has a one hit zone all the way out here right so it becomes like very threatening actually it's even more than that it's like here so it's very threatening compared to a one key which would only have a double hit zone right here or just any melee phobia, which only has a double hit zone right here and a single hit zone here. So it just covers much less space. And that is something that is very important to understand for both taking points, planning how you like want to play the game or setting up kills and stuff like that. If we just take a, what's it called, stabby in here, you can see this actually has a zone for double hitting that is the same as the Jin's thing, it is of course much slower. So currently our double hit zone actually only ends up being here and our single hit zone is out here because it is a one movement phobia. So this unit has a lot less of a zone despite still having a better double hit zone. And that is why you see Stabby and Domangles at units with only one movement but two range still have very very good stats despite their double hit zone being larger. That is also why they are very good for smaller maps because you don't have to cover nearly as much space but you still get the double hit zone being larger. So the single hit zone being a bit small compared to a two movement two range doesn't matter that much but having a large double hit zone is still very very good. Anyway, that's just about all I wanted to talk about for the first one because I just wanted to like get the very basic part of zoning out. And then in the next one, we will be looking at team zoning and how to set up threats, which kind of are like what this prepared you for, just to make sure everyone knows what I'm talking about when I go into that video. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.